Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you're all doing well, it is Sunday, the day after Juventus versus Roma, unusual, why? Not the result, of course, because we already drew versus Sampdoria with a 0-0, but unusual playing time, because normally we were used in that Serie A 22-23 to be the last one to play, and already knowing all the other results, this time we will have to wait to understand if Juventus will have to catch up only two points from Inter, Milan, Lazio, for example or if it will already be four points because tonight we will understand what Napoli did versus Fiorentina in that post game video what will we do we will split it in two parts so that everyone is happy the ones that are loving the controversy the words what the Italian pages the front pages but also inside the pages are saying about our beloved Juventus will be really happy because that's what we'll do in that first part and then towards the second part of the video we will go into a in-depth video, tactical breakdown, what did Juventus do well, what did Juventus do bad. In that video, we'll try to be objective, underlying the good things, because there were good things, and I know that a lot of people were angry after the draw of yesterday, because we have to admit it, yesterday we lost two points, we didn't win one point, we lost two points, but also we have to remember but that a lot of things went really well, especially in the first 58, 60 minutes of the game. So we start after you putting a maximum of like, after subscribing to the channel, we start with a front page Tutto Sport, who is saying Juve che rabbia. Juventus, what an anger, because yes, we have to be angry. I repeat, we lost two points yesterday. We took these two points and we threw it away. We gave it to Roma. One point for Roma, one point for Juve. Roma with seven points. Juventus with five points in the ranking. Juventus is at the moment not defeated yet, but we already conceded our first goal with that header of Tammy Abraham. It is an anger, and I felt the anger of the Juventini yesterday during the game in these last minutes but also in the post game life Juventini were angry we started again with everything that we did well to forget about them and focus on the bad things were there bad things absolutely yes there were bad things and Juventus probably in the last 30 minutes were absolutely not able to react and to replicate what well we did in that first uh, part of the game we continue because I tell you a lot of bad things that we will see where Juventus can improve in that tactical breakdown in the second part of the video but also some good things first of all Corriere dello Sport is opening Mu di Testa Mu with the header it's not the first time that Mourinho and Roma are able to win with headers or from Smalling or this time with the first official goal in Serie A this time from Temi Abram but they are also writing in small letters of course that Roma was suffering and they were suffering a lot but at the end they were able to react Abram is answering that beautiful freaking from Dusan Vlaovic what is the narrative what is Gazzetta dello Sport saying well, they are speaking about Milan with yesterday. A beautiful performance from Charles de Ketelar, a 2-0 win versus Bologna. They have now 7 points in Serie A, but then they are speaking on the right side about Max, Max Allegri, that is uh, going in contrast on Mu 1-1. They are also saying that Vlaovic had a really beautiful goal. The Juventus is present, Juventus is there, but Dybala inspired with that beautiful assist the goal of the 1-1. Inside Tutto Sport, alla Juve manca il colpo del KO, del KO. What does that mean? That Juventus, they did really well, but they missed the fact to finish the game. They were not able to finish, to kill that game, especially in the moment where Juventus should have killed that game. We continue with Gazzetta dello Sport and these double pages are saying that Juventus is growing. Roma is saving themselves. A real objective title because this is what we saw. If we put aside the anger that we already spoke about in the beginning of the video and we analyze the game, we watch again the game without the emotion because we already know the score, we can say that Juventus is growing versus Sassuolo. The performance of yesterday from Juve was better than the one that we won 3 g versus Sassuolo and it was absolutely day and night if you are comparing it versus the one that we played away versus Sampdoria. Roma saved themselves and yesterday who else than Mourinho was able to confirm it because right after the game he said it to Max Allegri but also he repeated it in press conference post game he said que culo what a luck luck is a beautiful word to say que culo but yesterday he said in the first half I was ashamed about the performance of Roma 
a bit better in that second half, but we had a lot of luck. And it's absolutely correctly. How was that luck arriving to Roma? It was because of that last 30 minutes, but Juventus played really well. First of all, with the choices of Massimiliano Allegri. And this is where we start entering that tactical breakdown with an unusual 4-2-3-1, because this is how we play with a lot of surprises. Danilo put it on the left side of that center back with Bremer playing a lot better than versus Sassuolo on that right side. That was first choice of Allegri that absolutely paid back because Danilo, a surprise in that center of the defense, did really, really well. And Bremer, absolutely great. We saw again the Bremer that we were used to see when he was playing at Torino. Not only these two choices were really great, but also the fact to play with a double pivot with Locatelli and Rabiot behind the three offensive players that were Kostic on the left, Quadrado on the right side, but especially number 20, Fabio Miretti behind Vlahovic and Fabio Miretti he changed that game absolutely not only with the starting lineup but also with the average position of our players because if you really see how we played we played with that four 2-3-1 with Miretti that was absolutely great in finding his position between the line something that we were missing a lot last season because Miretti was not playing but he has the intelligence the maturity to understand and knowing how to make himself free between the lines using these spaces but also when he has the ball on his feet we are expecting creativity something that he was able to offer we see that Fabio is probably the one the one that we were waiting for so so many so many years the last one that came out of that youth sector and did really well was Claudio Marchisio maybe we have the hair of Claudio Marchisio Fabio Miretti that a lot of people are already starting to compare to Kevin De Bruyne he has a long journey to go of course before reaching the the level of the Belgian player but we can say that Fabio Miretti yesterday was absolutely great and also yesterday Max Allegri was confirming it saying that Miretti he was really great he was phenomenal not a lot of players has the intelligence of Miretti and this is something that he was super happy about grande grande Max that was praising Miretti another thing that Max Allegri was doing well I told you a lot of great things in that video and then we will go to the things that Juventus needs to improve was the fact that versus last year when we were analyzing the games we were playing a lot of time to the right side of the field trying to find Quadrado we know it and repeated it so many times pass to Quadrado and Inshallah Quadrado that was absolutely not great yesterday beginning of the season super super slow for our number 11 Juan Panita but we see that Juventus is diversifying the way of playing we are going on the left side with 43% of the time on the right side with 37 and we also try with 21% of the time to go centrally Juventus that is offering a lot more solution and being unpredictable something really great we see it also in the stats Juventus for the first time able to win versus uh, Roma that was really great in possession normally they were winning that possession 57% possession for Juventus but also a possession that was not only in our field like we saw versus Sampdoria but a lot of time also in the second opposition half so in the field of Roma productive efficient possession of the ball from Juventus yesterday we won the duels versus the team that was the best team winning duels until match day two with 62% Juventus was able to go into contrast and win these duels unfortunately not the one that we had to win on the header of Tammy Abrams we were doing a lot more passes with 500 passes versus not even 400 first from Roma but what we like to analyze was that these passes were accurate with 88% accuracy not only that as especially the one that we love to see is that we were also accurate in the final third final third or at least opposition half with 76 percent of accurate passes in opposition half we remember the one of Sampdoria 63 percent we see a Juventus that is growing there not only with the passes but also the one that were touching the balls because if we remember 100 touches from Bremer 95 from Rugani this time the two players that touches the most ball were Alexandro and De Chile with 87 and 80 
a totally different way of starting and building from the back not anymore from the center of the defense but trying to go to the wings into the middle or from the wings immediately to Kostic and Quadrado. Danilo, Filip, Kostic were touching 78 and 66 passes. We see that a lot of players were touching and especially Locatelli with 65 is double, even more than double the touches that he had versus Sampdoria. A Locatelli that played a really great game. Not only Locatelli played great but also Rabiot. Rabiot that was praised into Tosport with a beautiful uh, 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 rating there with 7.5. Maybe a bit exaggerated but he was able, the Frenchman, to give Juventus some stability there in that 4-2-3-1. Rabiot that played a bit more on the right side of the field. Unusual position for him but it did really great. He dominated Rama midfield and especially Matic and that's where the game is changing. When Rabiot goes out of the field, of course the energy of everyone dropped down. The players that we had on the bench, we know that we can't count on Bonucci, Di Maria, Chiesa, Pogba, so the ones that were there on the bench, they entered and they were not able to offer what Juventus was needing. So it means quality players with fresh energy, because we had fresh energy, but probably not the same quality as the one that were starting the game. We see that Juventus changed a bit the way of playing with Weston McKennie totally on the right side, playing as a right winger, and he was really, really not great for me. The worst player on the field. Happy birthday to you, by the way, Weston McKennie. Hopefully you can come back, come back and an acceptable level because what we saw in the three first game of the season were absolutely not okay. Maybe also because of Allegri putting you on that right midfield. Why? Because probably we had no fullbacks. All the fullbacks started the game with Danilo, Quadrado, De Cilio and Alexandro. There is nobody else on the bench. Maybe Juventus management need to try until the last day of the Mercato to bring us another solution in these fullbacks. Right or left, I don't care, but someone is probably needed. Another thing that didn't work absolutely was Filip Kostic and these crosses. We see how many crosses we failed. Look at the number a lot of time on the left side. You see that number 17 that went, if I'm not wrong, 13 times with attempts on crosses on only one time he did a beautiful cross. He needs also to learn not only to cross on the ground, but maybe to put that ball a bit higher. That would be really appreciated by Filip Kostic. Attempts are there, dribbles not that much. Gazeta Dello Sport was saying he is not yet at the level of Di Maria. Probably Gazeta is exaggerating a bit because this is not what we are expecting from Kostic. What we are expecting are crosses like he did yesterday, but successful crosses, more than unsuccessful crosses. Juventus, a change versus last year as well, is that yesterday they went 14 times with some attempts toward the goals, only three times on target, have to increase that accuracy on shots but they tried from the distance a lot of times and this was something that we appreciated a lot because if we are comparing versus the other games and especially last year we were missing these shots from outside of the box Juventus tried it at least so we see the intention from the shield of Rabiot and we are missing maybe that quality that can increase with a Paul Pogba coming back but at least the intention are there another thing that we were missing yesterday is probably that anger that anger that Fino alla fine that eyes of the tiger, the will of fighting, that Grinta, we saw it yesterday at the ninth minute of the game when there was Vlaovic fighting with Smalling and then all the players from Roma came to support Smalling, we saw nobody from Juventus coming to defend our player. We are not saying here that we have to, uh, to, to put violence into the game, absolutely not, but a bit of, of Grinta, a bit of Grinta to defend our own players. It was really a strange image that we caught yesterday. Bonucci will try to be there versus Spezia, even if we think that he will be there versus Fiorentina. Di Maria, same discussion as Bonucci, he will be there. Luckily for Rabiot, and we have to say luckily, Rabiot were only cramps, so not an additional injury in the J Medical, sorry. Speaking and finishing with Mercato, Paredes in 48 hours, this is what Tuto Sport was saying, but we have some news that apparently Pared has already found the agreement with Juventus and he could already start traveling today or later tomorrow morning so that he can be a new Juve player. We finish with the last news, guys. Arthur, he has some requests from Portugal, from France with Lyon and also some clubs from Premier League. Let's see if he will leave because he's absolutely out of the project of Juventus. And then the crazy news of yesterday, Cristiano Ronaldo could potentially go to Napoli. Something totally crazy that I was absolutely not expecting. Will it happen or not? I have no idea. 
thanks for the video thanks for watching the video guys hey, i spoke a lot today it was a long video i spoke too much probably so put a maximum of likes subscribe to the channel grazie forza you vent